that was bright. I have new glasses. And they're the right prescription. I haven't had proper glasses fitted for five years now. I was still living in Lancashire when I last had my eyes tested. And I was under the age of 19. Um, I've never paid for an eye test. So that, that, that should give some indication as to the fact that I don't ever get my eyes done. Which I should, and I had to start doing. I had to get my eyes done because uh, I'm diabetic. They're neat, ain't they? Please go check out this Instagram account. This is the woman who did my nails. Um, because of the current lockdown, she's doing stick on nails and they amazing. So, link in the description. I highly recommend you checking her out, honestly. Also, I've never had nails like that I can do this with. <laughs> So it has been a hot minute since I filmed a video, I'm aware, and I'm sorry. I did plan on, I was planning on returning to YouTube at the start of the year, but I have been getting used to new medication, which I did mention in my last life update. I started Haloperidol last month and today I want to talk to you about this because I did a search on YouTube for my experience with Haloperidol because a lot of the time you can find personal experiences with medication if you type in my experience with venlafaxine if you type in my experience with antipsychotics something always comes up but I, what came up with the Haloperidol wasn't good every single video I saw and that I clicked on and that I watched was a negative negative video on a medication that's actually really successful Now I'm not going to sit here and say that it has no side effects. Haloperidol is a first generation antipsychotic. Okay, it's an old medication, so yes, the side effects are more brutal than, say, quetiapine. But for some of us, me included, quetiapine is a waste of everything. I am going to be the one that, that sits here and does a positive video talking about haloperidol. I started on haloperidol in December, so it's been over a month. I'm coming up on two months, actually. Um, I'm seeing my psychiatrist Monday to increase the dose and potentially come off my antidepressant and switch me to a mood stabiliser because we've all finally realised that antidepressants make Lydia manic as fuck. Hence why I've never made a video talking about my experience with antidepressants because I don't have any positive experiences. Yeah, positive experience with haloperidol. Haloperidol is a first generation antipsychotic, as I said. It is used to treat any variety of things, mania, psychosis, delirium, Tourette. It's used a lot in, in mental health and in neurological health. I take it morning and night, and I will say this, it does not make me sleepy in the slightest. And yes, I take sleeping tablets as well, because sleep is important. I'm prescribed it. I'm prescribed haloperidol to manage my symptoms that are psychotic, so hearing voices and seeing things. Like shadows that are moving around the walls that look like people that really can't be there, but hey. Uh, and some of you probably don't know this, but last month I actually did come quite close to being sectioned because I was hearing voices and seeing things, which don't really know what to say on that other than it sucked. I actually stood my ground with things for once and I was like this can be managed if we change my antipsychotic because I've previously be been on Clopixel as a depot, I've been on Quetiapine. Olanzapine is just a drug we don't talk about. Um, and now I'm on Haloperidol again. This is the second time I've been on Haloperidol. I used to take liquid form when I was younger, so I used to struggle with tablets. Now I have 13 prescriptions and 13 tablets a day, minimum, to take, sometimes more. So uh, I can do tablets now. Some antipsychotics don't come in the form of liquid and that means some people can't take them. Haloperidol is one that comes in. I've learned that with my antidepressant, it sends me very high. <laughs> Mania is such a hard thing to explain. It's like everything is going great until you start crashing and then it's a massive fall down. Then you go straight back up and you feel on top of the world and then crash. 
it's so hard to explain it's such an intense emotion i'm on it because hi i'm bipolar i have been since i was 13 years old and now i'm 23. i started on haloperidol because i was hearing voices that was the main symptom i had and it was really affected me i was honestly i just wasn't in a good place i don't want to go into like the ins and the outs of what I, i'm not here to give people ideas on how they can end themselves but let's just say i had a lot of really strong impulses and the means of carrying out said impulses i nearly did on two occasions and i did get taken to hospital on the one but then i got discharged two days later because we agree the hospital doesn't ever help me it makes me worse which i agree with Here's to keep Lydia out of hospital. <laughs> it's literally half past six in the evening. Why am I so bouncy and bubbly and awake? The haloperidol dose I was started on was 0.5 milligrams, which is the lowest dose, I believe. Uh, I'm on 0.5 twice a day. The plan is to get my evening dose up and put my morning dose up and add in a PRN. The haloperidol has helped me massively with my anxiety and I'm not taking clonazepam really at all anymore which uh haloperidol has literally been a lifesaver like i started taking it and i was really anxious about starting to take it even i've done it before i was anxious because in my head i was like if this doesn't work i'm going to be impatient and i honestly can't deal with impatient again i just can't i've started taking haloperidol and the only side of the, there's two side effects that i've had with this and to me i can i can live with them one it really affected my eyesight a lot it made everything fuzzy i couldn't focus on anything and when i say focus i mean i literally couldn't my eyes would not focus on it i couldn't my eyes were that bad um the other one is anxiety tick I've, I, I've always had little like stims and tick or whatever you want to call them and this has just made them a bit like made them more involuntary and i scared satsuma a few weeks ago because i was just had a twitch attack on a bed on the, on the bed and satsuma was lying on me and he just jumped up if you don't know who satsuma is this is satsuma becca's adorable little kitty cat um who's literally sleeping on a heated blanket as we are that's the main thing for me that that, that bothered me to begin with but now i've kind of and the thing with most medications is you have to give them at least six to eight weeks to actually start working and for side effects to wear off so i can say that a lot of the like the side effects just haven't been there and people are like oh my god it's got horrible side effects don't go on i don't take it but i take a few side effects over feeling suicidal i will take a few side effects over hearing voices I will take a few side effects over literally hating my own existence. I was given haloperidol last January when I was impatient, for lack of a better description. Um, that fucked me up. That, that, that fucked me up. But the tablets have like, it's literally been a, a lifesaver. An absolute lifesaver. And I actually mean as I say this, I'm actually glad I'm alive which is more than I can say for the last year of my life. I was talking to a few people on Instagram and apparently people are told like haloperidol should even talk short term. See haloperidol is labelled as this bad drug and people are like shouldn't be out there it needs to be stopped being prescribed. What these people don't realise is everyone's experience with medications are different. So my experience is different to yours. I react badly to a lot of things medication wires but that's me that's not everyone. If you compare me and Be Becca's on a medication that I couldn't function on at all. I think what people need to know is that it just just because one person has an experience does not mean it isn't helping ten other people. And yes, it has side effects. Doesn't everything? Every little thing we do has a consequence. Some are good, some are bad. I want to say this as well. Haloperidol has actually been deemed one of the twenty essential end of life medications because it helps with delirium. It helps relax people at the end. It's something that's needed and while people might see it as this bad drug it's there for a reason and i'm sitting here i'm 23 i live with my partner I'm pretty down a lot of the time i struggle with my mental health and honestly starting that medication made the world of difference and i'm only on a low dose i'm not on a high dose i'm not on a ton of meds anymore i used to be on 10 different psych meds. I'm on 
four, which is unbelievable for me. I've been on combinations of medication for so long. Teleperidol has helped me more with my anxiety than any other medication that I've ever been on. And if I have to have a few side effects to not feel anxious, I'm, I'm taking the med. And I know medication is not for everybody, and I know people use therapy instead of meds, or do both. I'm on a waiting list for therapy, and I actually feel stable enough to do it. And that's because of the medication. If I wasn't on the medication, I wouldn't be able to do the therapy because I wouldn't be stable enough, and chances are, I would be in hospital right now if I hadn't been put on this med. Haloperidol can cause sedation and it can make people feel sleepy. I know the first week that I took it, I was so dopey. It was unbelievable, but now I'm on it and I've been on it for a while. I can function pretty well. I did run out a few weeks ago and I did make a video on this, but then link down below. I made a video and I was talking about how I had ran out over bank holiday and I was literally off it for 24 hours before I relapsed with like how I was feeling and before I started hearing things again and that's how quickly things can change and I just want to say if you haven't taken your meds and you're supposed to have, take your meds. That's what I'm doing when I finish this video. Haloperidol is something that I would seriously recommend people consider. If you're taking clonazepam, lorazepam, diazepam, any benzos, yes they're helpful and yeah, clonazepam helped me for two years but I know if I come off it and I haven't got anything else in place, I will be back at square one. So my psychiatrist started me on haloperidol at my request. I asked if I could change antipsychotic and she agreed. I also asked, I remember I literally asked her, I was like, can I come off another pound? She's like, we'll do it after Christmas. She knows that I have a lot of struggles around Christmas time, so I was kept on it. But yeah, haloperidol's helped me more in the last month than any other medication ever has. I, I was on quetiapine for two years, nearly. It did nothing. It wasn't even helping with my sleep. So, yeah. And the fact is, things got so intense that it was, wasn't even worth taking the quetiapine because I knew it wasn't doing anything. And I, I did say, I've said months ago, that I didn't think the quetiapine was working. I have done a lot of reading into haloperidol. I've read into a lot, of, a lot of antipsychotic medication because they're a key part in me doing well and staying in the community because I do struggle with psychosis and I do struggle with hearing voices. I have danced around that a lot and I don't really, I never used to talk about it because I used to be like, people are gonna think I'm crazy and I hate saying that. Well that's literally what I used to think which is why I never talk about it. But the truth is, it's something that so many people go through. I don't know why I was so afraid to talk about it, considering half the stuff that I talk about anyway. But yes, Haloperidol has been a complete lifesaver for me, and I know it is for a lot of other people. I just wish there was more positive things on social media about it. If you think your medication isn't working, speak to your team, speak to your doctors. And I'm gonna recommend a book, actually, that explains all psychiatric drugs, including mood stabilizers, antidepressants, anxiety meds, sleeping tablets, and that is Psychiatric Drugs Explained, this book here. I have this book and I, any medication I've been on, I've wrote down, like, on sticky notes, like how it made me feel and how I reacted to it. And I went through the list and I was thinking about back to when I was private. Because so when I was private, I was on five milligrams in the morning, five milligrams at night of haloperidol. And it, it did help me then. But because I switched NHS private back to NHS, it was so, so problematic and has been problematic up until this point. Um, now my consultant's actually read my private notes and actually agrees with what the consultant that I paid to and actually, she actually listened to what the consultant said that I had when I was private and she's seen the change in me since starting on haloperidol and no joke, I've been so much, I can, I can function a lot better now than I could then I'm getting back on track with my uni work, which I was nearly at dropout point in December 
and now I'm nearly back up to date, which that's something for me. I was scared I was gonna have to defer and now I don't need to. I just think it's just helped so much. I can't, but chances are I wouldn't even be alive at the minute if I hadn't had it changed because I seriously question whether the quetiapine was helping or making things worse. I fear that it was making things worse, which obviously is not ideal, but we live, we learn, and that's life. So if you've got any questions about medication or haloperidol or want to ask me anything at all, I'm very open about my medication. I don't mind talking about it. I've been on a lot of meds and I even, I don't mind talking about the taboo ones, I don't mind talking about benzodiazepines, I don't mind talking about sleeping tablets, and I don't mind talking about any medication. The conversation needs to be had, and I'm sorry but YouTube is just full of all these negative videos. Some of what's said in them isn't even like an accurate depiction of what the drug actually is supposed to do, so I feel like if you're going to talk about medication you need to know what you're talking about. I can do a factual video talking about what haloperidol actually is, if that's something people would be interested in, let me know in, in the comments. I'm also doing video requests, so uh, let me know as well, because uh, I don't mind. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with me? <laughs> I'm just laughing at myself. I'm home alone and I'm laughing at myself, I don't even know why, but I'm happy. Um, yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> if anyone wants to talk, my inbox is open. 2021. No drama. Please. I will do absolutely anything. Also, just a quick side note on that subject. If you send me abuse, you're getting blocked. I'm not having a discussion with you. The block button exists for a reason and I'm damn well gonna use it. See, I've learnt a lot in the last year, which is why I took like, I, I literally didn't upload properly for like half a year. Let, let's be real here. So yeah, I'm gonna end this here. I don't know what I'm gonna title this video. I feel like I rambled. I feel like I'm laughing a lot. But I just want you to know that life's good. <laughs> for once, life's actually good. So yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you guys. Also, quick side note, I have Patreon. <laughs> I try, I'm, I'm uploading a lot more on there now. Um, I've already got some pre-recorded stuff that I want to put up on there. So uh, hit that little little subscribe button. I also have an ASMR channel and I also have a react channel. Then link down below. Go check them out. The react channel I upload pretty much all, all the time so go check it out. Maybe. Give me a chance. I might surprise you. You never know.